Thanks for dropping by Visual Art Photography. I'm Ray Scott. So today we're going to be taking a look at high key flowers. Now why would you want to take a beautiful thing like flowers with all of their beautiful color and kind of wash it out a little bit? Well, we're going to take a look at why. But before we get into that, I just want to mention that we have a brand new channel on YouTube called Macro World. And it's for all of you big macro enthusiasts out there. And I have the link below to Macro World. If you'd like to check it out, that would be great. If you'd like to subscribe so that you won't miss out on any of the action, that would be great too. So the link is below for Macro World. Today here on Visual Art Photography, it's High Key Flowers. So as High Key would suggest, we're going to be overexposing everything to a certain extent. And I'm going to take you through at least one particular step, uh, one particular way that I'm going to be treating these flowers to create something hopefully a little bit special. And as always, our final goal is to always come up with something that we think is suitable for printing and for framing and for hanging on your wall. Now we may not always do that, but that's the goal. All right, let's take a look at the setup to get us started. Here's the basic setup. I've even got my camera on a bit of an angle as I was trying to change the position of the flowers compositionally, but you know, that's just something that I was trying at that particular time. Okay, notice the white background. That's what I wanted. I just wanted it to be really, really clean. And because I wanted it to be clean, I've actually got lights on the white sheet uh, to make it, give it a nice, even white look. I've also got the flowers lit on either side. I've got two lights on the flowers. But really, a very important point for high key photography is that you want to overexpose, right? So every shot I took uh, was either two or three stops overexposed. I even tried more than that, but I found it was just a little bit too much. I tried less, of course, but I found two to three stops overexposed uh, really, really worked well for what I was looking for. Uh, you may be trying different things as well, but the idea is to make everything just a little bit lighter than what we would call a normal exposure. All right? So here it is, two flowers exposed uh, pretty much the way you would for a quote-unquote normal exposure. So the flowers, you can see the detail in the flowers and so on and so forth. But how about if you overexpose it by two or three stops? High key photography, you get something like this. Now, what I've done to this as well in Lightroom is I've added a bit of a glow by moving the clarity slider to the left. All right, just that's the effect that I wanted. I wanted something that was a little bit more ethereal, if you know what I mean. So I added a glow. But you can see the high key effect as everything gets very, very white or much whiter than it was, a little bit more washed out. It's the effect I was looking for. How about this one? You move in a little bit closer, and now I've given it a treatment. I've run it through a, uh, a program, Topaz Labs, and I've added a little bit of an edge to the edges, if you, if you can see that, and it looks kind of painterly, um, and it's something that I was looking for. But let's go back to that original image for this effect. All right, more uh, of the edges. It's even a little bit more washed out in terms of the, the, the light, tones are even brighter, um, but you still have some color. Now I'm going to show you right now how I got to this. All right, so this is what it looks like in Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the background layer. All right, Command J for that. And the reason why we're doing that is because we're going to be going into a software that uh, is destructive and does not make its own layer automatically. So you make the layer for it, and we're going to go into Topaz. So we'll go to Filter up at the top at the menu bar, and we'll go down to Topaz Labs, because that's what we're going to be using today, Topaz Labs. And we'll go over to Simplify in the Topaz Studio setup. All right, so here we are in the Topaz Studio setup. And we see on the left-hand side, we have different options that we can use, different presets that we can use 
to change this image into anything you want. You can do this and change it into something that is black and white. Uh, you can do a black line only kind of thing. Anyway, the choice is totally up to you. And the nice thing about this is that you can combine different effects too. Now, this is not a Topaz uh, tutorial. I'm just showing you one of many ways to get to something that you may like. In this particular case, what I'm using is something called Cartoon My Critter, and it's this one right here. And I just, for me, I just really liked this effect. It's something that I, that I wanted, that I was looking for. You may be looking for something completely different than that. Now, if we go over to the right-hand side, you can see that there are different adjustments here as well. And just to work really, really, really quickly through this, we'll drop down the edges adjustment. And you can see it's set at 79. Now you can change that to anything you want, but these are settings that I like, that I used, and they're all in there. You can simplify the edge. You can change uh, the thickness. And if that, in fact, I think I'm going to here. Just change it a little bit, see what happens as it renders. Yeah, I like something like that. Just changed very, very subtly there. And the edge resolution. Maybe bring that down just a little bit. See the subtle change there? Just a little bit, a little bit more maybe. Okay, now for my taste, I like that. So I hit OK. And that brings us back into Photoshop where we have the topaz layer here. And you can rename that if you want. And that's the original background layer, topaz. And that's the change. Subtle, but it's what I wanted. Now, you can also make other adjustments. And I'm going to do one more thing here because I'm going to change the blend mode. And you can see the blend modes here. I'm going to change it to multiply. All right. Now, that's a big difference. That's not bad. I'm going to change it to multiply right now. A little bit dark for my taste. I can back it off a bit in terms of the opacity so that it's not entirely. What about 63%? Something like that. Let's take a look at before and after. Oh, you can do that. Or you can just leave it on normal. Actually, you know something? In this particular case, I think I like normal better. So. That's the way I'm going to leave it. High key flowers, but with a different kind of treatment. And of course, you can make millions of different types of treatments. It's up to you. It's always great to have richly colored flowers, but sometimes a different treatment is called for. And that's what we tried to do today. I hope you give it a shot and I hope it works out for you. Until next time, I'm Ray Scott reminding you it's not what you see, it's how you see it. And I'll see you soon.